Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're here at HP Discover. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the event. This is where we bring you the smartest minds that we can find. We extract the signal from the noise. We bring it out to you, our audience. If you've got questions, tweet me at, at DVellante. He's at Stu. And uh, we're here with Paul Miller. Paul is the uh, vice president within HP of the converged application systems. It's part of the converged infrastructure play in Donatelli's uh, enterprise group. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, converged systems and importantly, the affinity, the link, the alignment with applications uh, and workloads. Uh, so Paul, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, good to be here. Appreciate you coming on, and uh, this is a hot area. You know, it's, I said a number of times over the last couple of years, Stu, it's a two-horse race, you know, a converged infrastructure between uh, VCE and, and HP. And of course, the market's changed a lot. Uh, it's an enormous market. We sized it, the TAM, at 400 billion. So it's when we look at a couple of years. Yeah, so, but. I, the 2017, but it's, it comprises servers and storage and networking, and so everybody wants a piece of that pie. Right. HP was early on in that. You've got a little different philosophy than you know the single block. You know, yep. any way you any color you want, as long as it's black approach. Right. Right. Um, so we're going to talk about that, but but tell us about your role in your organization, and we'll get into it. Okay. So my role is essentially taking the converged infrastructures and mapping and optimizing the applications on top of them and doing some engineering work to really bring out the best performance, best user experience in the marketplace. One example let me just give you, this uh, yesterday we announced, uh, and we brand these under a couple different names, HP App Systems, the Vert Systems, and then my team also does the Cloud Maps, which is the application yep. layering and optimization on our cloud system. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we launched our app system for Hadoop, app system for Apache Hadoop. And what we did there, different than competition who just kind of ship Hadoop with their hardware, mm -hmm. we actually did unique engineering integration. We have a unique piece of software that manages clusters. As you know, Hadoop is this big scale out cluster, right? And it's very difficult to manage because there are no tools to manage very large clusters of Hadoop. So it can be quite daunting for any IT professional to say, yeah, I'm going to spray all my data into Hadoop and then manage it without any tools to understand and manage the cluster. We integrated Hadoop with those unique tools, put it together with optimized hardware, our networking and our DL380 Pro Alliance, and have a, a unique, highly optimized Hadoop solution for the marketplace that is 3.8 times faster than any, any part of the competition but as someone pointed out, even more importantly, I can manage it with enterprise class tools, deploy over 800 Hadoop nodes in, in less than 30 minutes, provide complete enterprise fault tolerance and disaster tolerance. So we take converged infrastructure and application and then make it real for the end customer. So, so Paul, I'm wondering if I could poke at that yeah, for yeah, a second, yeah. because we, we've spent a lot of time looking at you know, the converged infrastructure and you know, the Hadoop big data marketplace, yep. and one of the things, Hadoop was not built to run on your, it's not your SAN, it's a it's scale out, super low latency, very different environments. A lot of the big practitioners say their data science team doesn't know how to talk to their infrastructure team because it, it's it's just oil and water, they don't right. mix. So, you know, it, it's interesting to hear kind of, you say convergence, which most people think kind of virtualization, automation versus, versus Hadoop. So can you peel the onion a little bit for yeah, us Yeah, so that? when we think about uh, uh, convergence, it's not only for virtualized environments, but yeah. on bare metal, which Hadoop runs on. And abs yeah. You're absolutely right. Hadoop was designed to be almost be a black box. Right, just throw a cluster at it, scale across it. The problem is, as I just said, is that there are no tools. <laughs> it's very, very hard, because there are no tools. Yeah. No tools to help you set up and, and actually deploy. You know, it was designed uh, in the open source community for a very, what was thought to be a very, very small opportunity, right? The big web houses, right? That's who, that's who it was really designed by and for, who have dedicated gurus on the infrastructure and Hadoop gurus who know how to write the schemas and the, and, the, uh, and the queries. What we've done is really took what we have as a cluster management utility, which marries the hardware, understands hardware bottlenecks, instrumentation, how to actually lay out Hadoop onto a scale-out architecture. So it not only lays it out across one node, 
but in th thinks about managing it across multiple nodes. So we think we, uh, we have a really great solution, we're really proud of it, and we think it's going to help really take and make it easy for enterprises to actually adopt and deploy Hadoop. And, and just curious, what, what's the storage under under that? So yeah, it, this is all, you know, Hadoop is all uh, internal storage. HTFS, so this okay. is, yeah, uh, 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 DL380s okay. racked with storage, and then we, we hook it together with our HP networking uh, products, which actually have very deep buffers, and that actually increases the performance, reduces the amount of drop, drop packets uh, in a Hadoop cluster. Yeah, I mean, I talked to a lot of Hadoop practitioners and they're constantly frustrated that they're having to re-architect their infrastructure and you know several times you know during the life of a, a project so what you're putting forth is an infrastructure if I understand it correctly that can be much more adaptable and much flexible. more adaptable and give the give the end customer actually the insight you talk about over the life cycle what's real interesting about the nature of Hadoop right Hadoop was designed to marry structured and unstructured data together to take voice video business data, web click streams, et cetera. Unlike a traditional database where, you know, the data is fairly consistent when you set up a CRM system with a database, it's always the sales calls, the customers, the orders, right? Very consistent data in, in structure. Yep. Hadoop by its nature deals with all types of data. And so how the cluster is going to perform on day one when you may be bringing in a lot of voice and video versus the next day when you're bringing in click streams complete different uh, characterization. We have a tool, a 3D uh, visualization tool that helps customers understand uh, how to optimize on, uh, optimize over the life cycle of the changing data within the, within the cluster. Are there things you can do, I'm sure there are things you can do, but are you actually doing them at this point in time, or will you in the future with Vertica? Yeah, so we actually integrated Vertica with Hadoop. So Vertica and Hadoop exist in the same node, so that enables us to do deep, real-time analytics. We also integrated it with Autonomy to do human meaning analysis out of this, so it's an end-to-end -end solution. So uh, you know, one of the other big problems with Hadoop is once you put all the data into Hadoop, how do you extract value out? That's a huge problem. A huge problem. Yeah. By integrating Vertica and Autonomy, we have very simple, easy-to-use tools for customers to actually extract value and data out in a real-time basis. So, so how's that work? This is, this is definitely a big problem. That again, you talk to a, a lot of Hadoop practitioners, we actually are a Hadoop practitioner, we have a big data tool, and so the problem is, like you said, the, the data's out there, it lives, it's not in a God box, but there's, <laughs> there's tons of data, and there's needles in the haystack, and you want to bring them in and be able to analyze them. So you're saying, if I understand it correctly, you've integrated with Vertica, so that's yep. the sort of enterprise data warehouse metaphor for this whole thing, and Correct. then on top of that, Autonomy provides analytical tools. Uh, yeah. So, so, so not only search, but other. Yeah. So the ability to do advanced search, the ability to do real-time clickstream analysis and optimization based on meaning, just not based on you know the hardcore you know uh, structured uh, analytics that Vertica can bring as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, you know the cloud maps is yep. something that we've seen for a while now. Um, I used to always ask, what do you guys do in terms of reference architectures? And then of course, heard about cloud maps. And now, people sometimes think of that term reference architecture as a pejorative, right? <laughs> the, the new, you're going beyond reference architecture. Yeah, yeah, e Can even, even Dave Donatello used to say, some of these things are just, you know, wrapping paper around things. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> well, so yeah, when people think, now they say, no, reference architecture is a white paper, we're going beyond that. Can you add some color to that whole discussion right. and that narrative? Right, so what a cloud map is, 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 is taking sometimes up to you know, 10 plus years of understanding how an application and uh, infrastructure uh, uh, operate, right? So a reference architecture actually defines how much disk I should have, how much I.O. I should have, et cetera. What the cloud map does, it takes that core and then automates it on a cloud system. So let me give you an example, SharePoint. SharePoint is one of the fastest growing applications in enterprises today. It, customers are spawning them like crazy within, uh, within corporations. So customers are looking for a fast way to deploy new SharePoint uh, implementations. But they want to optimize it. And the other thing about SharePoint is it's just not one application, right? It's SharePoint, it's SQL, it's Exchange. It's, it's about eight different uh, layers of code that you need to lay down. What a cloud map does is it takes all the intelligence of HP and Microsoft in how you need to lay that software down, how it's best optimized on the server, 
how it builds in complete redundancy and failover and puts that in a simple tool, a simple script that a customer can go to a portal, click, download it, it checks to see that the resources are available. If the resources are available, automatically deploys it onto a customer environment. So it's really powerful. We've got about 500 of these cloud maps across infrastructure applications all the way up through uh, complex applications like a multi-tiered CRM application for, uh, for SAP. When I talk to a, a customers, we believe it takes a, out about 200 hours of application to infrastructure design, the test and, and, and certification of do I have I layered every piece of the software on correctly from laying on the OS to laying on the applications and puts that all together and, and we have a, a website, uh, cloudmaps.com, hp, hp slash go cloudmaps.com where customers can come and download these for free and start getting, uh, getting running today. Um, it really simplifies that whole how do I design an application to run in the cloud process? Yeah, so the converged infrastructure, we talked about this a lot, Stu, is really designed to aim at that problem of, uh, you know, the, what I call the IT labor problem. Yeah. If you look at how much we spend on labor, it's huge. It's about you know, 60, 65% of IT spending goes into labor. Absolutely. Either outsourced labor or, or internal staff, and we're supposed to be automating all this yeah. stuff. <laughs> so that's a, a, a huge challenge that has frankly constricted innovation. And that's why people always talk about, well, we spend 70% on running the business, 30% on growing the business. That is the reason why all these processes built around it. Paul, do you think we can move that needle with, with converged infrastructure, and how long is it going to take? Well, I think we're moving it today. Right? I mentioned with cloud maps, mm -hmm. at least 200 hours of, of time taken out of application design. Let me give you another, uh, one of our app systems, that's uh, one of our most popular app systems, is the app system for SAP HANA. Uh, customers are looking to deploy HANA quickly. Um, a lot of push to get into new databases and move off of, uh, off of legacy databases. HANA is a real-time in-memory database. Uh, but again, it's quite complicated to set up and configure. So what we've done is we've built an app system for HANA that can scale to multiple terabytes across a cluster interlinked with our iBricks technology that ships from the HP factory that literally in two days, a customer can have integrated with their applications up and running in their environment. Normally that would take two, three months easily to set up the hardware, integrate the, the technologies to achieve high availability, seamless scalability, test it all, and then deploy it. It arrives at their data center fully tested, fully deployed, they all have to do is, uh, is integrate it into their existing IP addresses and admin terminals. So SAP is interesting. We were at uh, Sapphire three weeks ago with theCUBE, yeah. and uh, it, was, it was the interesting part is you know you think of SAP, you think of big, complicated, expensive, inflexible. Um, the messaging from SAP at Sapphire was much different. It was mobile, <laughs> agile, but yeah. the reality is is the HP, I mean HP, SAP customers need to simplify the infrastructure, and they're and they're looking at converged infrastructure as a way to do that. So. Are you actively you know, working with, with SAP and you get a lot of traction in SAP accounts? Yeah, are you so seeing that? Can you confirm that trend? Yeah, so SAP, uh, HANA, we're getting a, a lot of traction, deep pipeline, customers H HANA are, specifically? HANA specifically. Okay, so They're, I was just talking about general SAP, but so, yeah. so, so HANA so. specifically, deep, deep pipeline, that's where we're engaged very closely. I, if we look at HANA, it's kind of the tip of the spear for uh, transformation in an SAP environment bringing in a real-time real database, and then looking at what it can do to the applications around it, is really transformational to a lot of customers, because now they can do things, get richer data, make decisions faster. So we're seeing HANA be the tip of the spear, and then customers upgrading and transforming the rest of their ERP, CRM environments. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, it's obviously, if I were an HP, I'd be, pounding HANA and telling all my employees, every time you say HANA, you get a dollar. At least a dollar. At least a dollar. I give them two personally. <laughs> right, right, right. So, 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 so Paul, if, if I remember cor correct, Virtual System and App Systems <laughs> launched a year ago at this show. Correct. Uh, I'm wondering if you can give us any data points as to, you know, not, not just how many different solutions you have, but how many customers, how is the adoption take up and, uh, you know, the, the rollout in the marketplace? Okay, great. So, um, we launched uh, Virtual System and App Systems 
the vert system portfolio spans across uh, uh, a small, medium, large yep. solution that spans both uh, VMware and, and Microsoft. Uh, so we have Hyper-V as well as VMware solutions. Really strong uptake, especially around the VS3 product, which is the top, uh, the top, the large mm, system. That's got the three-part storage that's in got it. The three the part storage the left system hand, I and yeah, and uh, and the uh, blade system. We are in a ton of customer accounts. Really, and, and customers actually see it as their private cloud, their entry to the private cloud. So very, very strong uptake. Uh, you know, I'm trying to push as many through the factory as possible as as we go. Yeah, we also yeah. launched so, 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 I'm sorry, okay. so just follow up. So, I mean, David Scott talked about over 100% growth of the three-par business. You know, what, what can you give a percentage or, you know, rough number as to, you know, how much of the portfolio is, you know, going to well, gross margins. Or gross margins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, I, can't can't give, I can't give those. <laughs> I would say that uh, virtual system is pitched in more than 50% of those accounts, right, as the N10 solution. Yep. People are coming in saying, I've got this great solution. You know, the, the, the three par sales force around Vert system is, is the best sales force. They're going in, it helps them differentiate, helps them move an end-to-end -end solution. You mentioned our, our friends at, uh, at Cisco earlier, right? It's the killer of the V-Block because they can't scale, they don't have the capabilities, et cetera, that we have there. So that's a very powerful, powerful solution. On the, uh, on the uh, let me give you another stat, on the cloud maps, in the last 12 months, over 5,000 cloud maps downloaded. Customers understand, they're, they're using them, they're deploying them, very, very strong. HANA, uh, I'm not sure if I'm at, <laughs> at uh, liberty to, uh, to disclose the pipeline on there, but it's in the hundreds, and it's all your marquee accounts. Think of every retail, every consumer good, every uh, everyone in, in the, uh, in the uh, energy sector, all yeah, there's a lot of enthusiasm out of Sapphire for yeah. that. Yeah, and I, but I've, I've been criticized actually for some, oh, of course that's a Sapphire, that's SAP's you know, messaging, but, but you're confirming that there's actually a you know, legitimate pipeline. Okay, this, legitimate this, pipeline and we're seeing just significant improvement. We've had a lot of fun with that. Larry Ellison actually was quoted as saying <laughs> that, uh, that SAP coming after Oracle and databases like me taking Kobe one on one. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, it's fun, but you know, the, at the end of the day, people want something different to have a major it's impact on their business. And uh, maybe not for OLTP, but for OLAP, it makes a lot of sense. For OLAP um, today, it, 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 it's, a, it's an outstanding solution. Yeah. Then we go to OLTP and the Microsoft solutions. The, uh, the DL980 solution that we have for OLTP, just screaming off the shelf. We're mm -hmm. seeing tremendous growth. Microsoft, when I talk to uh, Ted Kummer, who runs that business, just tremendous growth in the SQL business. That's our flagship for OLTP as part of the app system portfolio. Mm -hmm. It is rocking and rolling. The, the DL980, ProLine DL980 platform, you know, eight sockets, outstanding memory footprint, tons of I.O. It just rocks for OLTP. And so we're seeing a lot of Oracle to uh, to Microsoft migration on that platform alone. It's a great, well, it's a great architecture. Aligning infrastructure with applications is what it's all about. Uh, Paul Miller, you know, that's that's the, the key glue to business value, right? We always talk Absolutely. about infrastructure and, and the, the missing link is that application. So you're in a very you know strategic position and it sounds like you guys are executing well. Thanks very much for coming inside the cube. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Take All right care. everybody, this is uh, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of HP Discover. Keep it right there, we'll be back.